thank you for having us and thank you lynn for um agreeing to to share some insight into how you operate uh at nasa i'm i'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions from the crowd um so why don't we start off can you please tell me a little bit about yourself and uh your role at, at nasa please so um Rosh, i was thinking last night i have i have been an employee of the johnson space center for 33 years now <laughs> it's been a long time yeah. in houston texas um i actually live in galveston texas most of my career was really dedicated to information management and information technology support until 10 years ago and 11 going on 11 years now um, I was offered the opportunity to come and support this crazy idea of using crowdsourcing as a way of solving some of NASA's biggest problems. Um, and man, I have not looked back. It has been amazing. It's been an, a, a, an incredible 10 years. So I currently manage NASA's Center of Excellence for Collaborative for collaborative innovation, even I struggle with saying it. COSI is the acronym we use. But the important tool that we have is called the NASA Tournament Lab, which is we have um, over 20 companies that we work with, including Top Coder, um, who do crowdsourcing mostly in the form of competitions for us. Although these days we're starting to get into the use of freelance expertise and task-based crowdsourcing. Um, but for the most part, the last 10 years have been about some amazing public competitions. Um, it's been a blast, Rush. It's been a blast. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, all right. I'm going to ask you the tough questions. Woo. Can you Can you tell me about the Austin Powers cardboard cutout behind you. What's the, what's this? What I think everyone wants to know. What is the story? Uh, so a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, uh, twenty years ago now, um, we used to the team I was part of at the time. We would go see the Austin Powers movies, and we would do Austin Powers quotes in the office all the time. And it was one of those situations where people felt like they needed to give me Austin Powers stuff. So a dear friend gave me this cardboard cutout that she had gotten from a movie theater. And uh, Austin has been my office mate ever since. Um, I didn't have him with me in my home office. It has been almost a year now since uh, I had been in my actual office on the Johnson Space Center. And the other day I went into the office and it was one of those bizarre things, you know, like everything is just stood still, nothing had changed. And I looked up and I said, Austin, where have you been? So he came home with me and has been part of my home office since. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, He's I love got that. A badge. He's got a badge. Somebody made him a badge <laughs> at one point. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Does it say like uh, international spy? Or yes, agent? it does. And it never <laughs> <Nice>. expires. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> he must have a very high government clearance. He does. Uh, you know, I think it's wonderful that that you are able to go back into the office and bring a piece of your office that has a lot of meaning home to you. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's rewind a little. So can you tell me a little bit about how the NASA Tournament Lab was created? Can you tell us uh, a bit about the history of the lab and the partners involved and how, basically how did it get started? And then what does the NASA Tournament Lab do? I, I know it's, uh, the name is now changed to uh, Tecosi. Well, actually we have a branding problem. Cosi is the organization, but the NASA Tournament Lab is really um, our toolkit. It's our suite of tools. Um, back in 2009, here at the Johnson Space Center, Jeff Davis, who was the head of what was then the Space Life Sciences Directorate, had taken a training course at Harvard where he met Kareem Lakani and had learned about this crazy notion of going to the public um, to solve research and development problems. Kareem at that time had done a lot of studying um, with the company Innocentive 
um, and it was pretty much laying a foundation for how to effectively use the methodology. Um, Jeff Davis was just fascinated, and I'm going to share with you, my cat is probably going to come over here at some point. Awesome. I'm going to try and keep him away. Um, but so it, it, Jeff, Jeff started experimenting with this use of crowdsourcing, and um, he was introduced to um, the chief technologist for our human exploration organization at headquarters. His name was Jason Cruzan. Um, Jeff was looking at and experimenting with using crowdsourcing to solve R&D problems. Um, Cruzan was, wow, could we use this to develop algorithms, to develop software? Why couldn't we apply the same methodology to um, the development of software and algorithms. And so he met Kareem. Um, Kareem, Jeff, and Jason started formulating this idea. Jason was so fascinated with it that he actually put in place a contract with Harvard. This was in 2010 when that contract went into effect. Um, Harvard was the prime contractor and Harvard just decided that they would do this little subcontract with a company called Topcoder. <laughs> And they dubbed it the NASA Tournament Lab. That contract lasted for five years um, and we couldn't extend it any longer. Harvard was an expensive prime contractor. Um, so that's how it began. And after that contract went away, we took on the NASA Tournament Lab name because we were NASA, which should be our lab. Um, and it's been that way ever since, continuing to grow, continuing to expand. That's awesome. Fantastic. Do you want me to talk a little bit more about a little more on the history and then kind of where we are today? Sure. That would be great. So in 2015, uh, we had a contract at the Johnson Space, Space Center with Innocentive. And then we had the contract from our headquarters organization. And I was trying to manage both of these things, both these organizations. And it was time that we kind of became one. And so that's when we did the NASA Open Innovation Services contract. Um, we could um, put in place relationships with several companies, um, and then we would compete among those companies for a particular job. Say we needed uh, an algorithm that could um, help identify asteroids. Um, and so we would put out a task order um, that said, okay, we need, we need an algorithm that can help us identify asteroids and from the uh, Earth-based telescopes and we would get proposals from companies and the company that won would be able to go do that. We had 10 companies on contract until last June where we now have 19 companies on contract. And Topcoder has remained um, one of the companies that we continue to um, do exciting work with. That's fantastic. I, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting that you bring up the, the Asteroid Data Hunter project. <laughs> That that was something that you and I got to work on together. Yes. And yes. I will I will never forget. I know this interview is not about me, but I thought I would share this. <laughs> I Lynn, one of the coolest things that I have ever done was getting to work with you. And in particular, when we went to South by Southwest for five days and we were working at the NASA booth together and every day we had a blast. We did. Um, <laughs> it was hard work though. Standing yeah. there talking. How many people did we talk to, Rush? I mean, it was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. NASA was very popular <laughs> at South by Southwest. But Ooh. I'll never forget, like we started the day smiling, ready to go. We ended the day just on a high. I remember having beers with you and Jason Cruz and um, when he showed up, it was awesome. <laughs> and it was, it was a wonderful opportunity. And I know I, I've thank you. I've thanked you in the past for the opportunity to work with you. And I just want to thank you again. Like it's been amazing. Gosh, um, you were awesome. You were awesome. I went back and looked at some of the project work you did because we have a difficult project coming up with multiple players in it. I mean, you are a rock star project manager, dude. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Lynn. Uh, all right, so I want to talk a little bit as a leader working in technology. 
What advice do you have for the woman who aspire to work in tech or are currently working in technology and want to advance their career? Uh, yep, what advice do you have? Um, just do it. Just don't give up. Keep going. Uh, get in there. Um, bring bring your bring your a game all the time um and i think there's there's you know i've seen in my career in the 30 years out there the changing role of women in nasa and i have had the privilege of having two um two women bosses who were technical people um the my most uh recent boss Kathy Kerner is now running the Orion program. So for the first time in NASA's history, we have a woman at the helm of human spaceflight. Her name is Kathy Leaders. And then the woman who's the head of the Orion program is Kathy Kerner, my former boss. It's like, nice. yes. So just do it. I think women have a lot they can bring to the, to the technical fields that they're involved in. And I, I think that, you know, it makes for a richer experience. I've, I've done that personally. So my advice is just go for it. Don't give up. You know, you're being a woman is an advantage. It's not a disadvantage in any way, shape or form. Agreed. Fantastic. What are the most important decisions that you make as a leader? I, I think the, the most important decisions are the ones that keep the crap away from your team so that they can do what they do best, you know, helping them with priorities, um, trying to keep them um, focused on, you know, their expertise, what they contribute, um, and letting them partake in the decision making, being a part, that's how you become a part, uh, an effective team, right? So um, if you lead right, you don't really have to lead. People, people do their jobs, love their jobs and wanna contribute. So as a leader, I think it's really creating an environment that allows them to thrive, that allows your team to thrive. It's really, really important. Those are the most important decisions you can make. And another one is just never accept the status quo. Don't accept the status quo. Don't accept the status quo. I love that. Thank you. How do you keep your team motivated? <laughs> I'm so lucky. I have. <laughs> So small team, there's um, eight and a half of us. We have one person who's part-time out in California, um, but we're all motivated. We're motivated by what we do and the difference that we see involving the public in meeting NASA's mission. Uh, it just excites us every day. There, there, it excites us every single day. So motivating my team has been super simple really simple. It's not hard. The work itself nice. is motivational enough. It, it absolutely is. I could just imagine, I will, I don't have to imagine. I've seen all of the amazing <laughs> things that you guys get to work on. And it's not just your average software development. A lot of it is cutting edge, like really interesting projects and programs and being able to work on really cutting edge uh, projects, I think is um, such a godsend. Yeah. So you guys are very lucky. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your experience with TopCoder and the top, uh, and in particular the TopCoder community? Uh, you have attended quite a few of the TopCoder opens. So, what is your favorite experience about working with the TopCoder, working with the community, and then the TopCoder opens? Okay, so I have to begin by saying I'm an employee of the federal government, therefore I cannot endorse or give the appearance of endorsing. What I can do is talk the facts and the facts are, um, we've done some incredible work. The Top Coder community, you know, Rosh, I think I first met you at a Top Coder Open in Orlando when they were first designing the ISS Longeron Challenge and that was just, I don't know how you describe a top coder open to somebody who's not been to one because the energy, the drive, the, and it's, it's the, it's competitive is all get out, but there's yeah. just such a positive edge to the competition. 
um, it was just exciting as heck. And we've continued to see how the top coder community has contributed to us. From the ISS Longeron competition way back when, which really was an experiment, but was a fabulously successful experiment to, to today, where you know I'm working on that project on co-registering, developing a tool to co-register lunar images from historic, you know, Apollo missions to co-register those with um, images from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Man, it's just, it's awesome. And to see the talent that comes to bear with that, because, at, you know, software development, algorithm development for us, we can't hire a bunch of people at all. And what the top coder community has done for us is to bring a level of talent and expertise that we wouldn't have had access to otherwise. It's been awesome. Did I answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is phenomenal. Thank you. Has a final takeaway. Uh, where do you see Topcoder not has like an organization, not as a company, but Topcoder has like a community? Where do you see it in five years? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, um, so I can't really see, but I, I can speak to it from my knot hole, which is we still struggle a little bit within NASA with this acceptance that somehow outside expertise is as good as what we have internal to NASA. We've got some amazing experts, um, some uh, amazing people with an amazing mission, but it's, it's 2021. We can't do it all ourselves. There is this amazing talent out there. So my hope is the top coder community continues to flourish um, and flourish well, and the expertise continues to grow, and that an organization like NASA is tapping into that with regularity um, and is using that to accelerate its own mission. That's that's what I can hope for in five years. Amazing. Lynn, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for, for being such a, a great friend and colleague. Like I've known you for over a decade now. Getting to sit down even virtually is nice. And whenever I see you, it's like the happiest day. Aww. So thank you again for your time. Thank you, Rush. Thank you so much for this and hey, to all of the amazing women that are part of the Top Coder community. I have to say one thing that I noticed at that first TCO, there were not a lot of women there. It's getting better, it's getting better. Come on gals, you can do it. Keep it up. Thanks Rush, awesome. thanks so much. And thank thanks you, thank you so much. <laughs>